Okay, now, hey, Jamal, I want to pronounce your last name right because I don't want to get into a fight, you know what I mean, where, <laughs> where I know I'll lose, you know what I mean? So please tell me your last name. Charlo. Jamal Charlo is on the yeah. Okay, now, hey, Jamal, I want to pronounce your last name right because I don't want to get into a fight, you know what I mean, where, <laughs> where I know I'll lose, you know what I mean? So please tell me your last name. Charlo. Jamal Charlo, Charlo is on the Yeah, that's right. It's Charlo, not Charlo. He said it, not me. Um, speaking of, it was business as usual for Charlo as he successfully defended his title with a stoppage of Dennis Hogan. As we said, um, the end came with a leaping left hook that knocked Hogan down. Um, and as the referee came in and delivered a fast count, very fast count, um, Hogan beat it, but his, his, his feet were gone and, and he didn't have the necessary balance to continue. So Charlo kind of fainted a jab and then got a reaction from Hogan, which allowed him to land the hook. Um, it, it was it was it was some good stuff. It was some decent stuff. So if you go back to our prediction, we call for Hogan not to be able to keep up, or to, or to keep Charlo off, and getting stopped for the first time, and that's what happened. We said he pushed Jamal, and it would go some rounds, and it, it went seven. So we were on the money. We were actually three and zero with our picks over the weekend. We get into the other ones later. Um, Charlo also scored a knockdown in the third round on an uppercut. And you saw Hogan do that tumble and got up. Um, he was game, but he was just outgunned. After the fight, I'm a little concerned about Charlo's comments. See, this is where boxing has gone the wrong direction. He said, and I quote, I'm the WBC champion. Okay, big deal. I'm going to enjoy this and spend time with my team. All right, fine. I'm here to fight whoever. Still okay. And then he said, you have to make the right decisions and do it at the right time. That's what it's all about. And on the surface, that sounds like, all right, well, What's wrong with that? He's just saying, you know, when is there's a money fight or whatever. No. Right decisions at the right time. Dude, what are you like, 30? I mean, come on. Yeah, the right decision when when uh, 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 a Manny Pacquiao, for example, gets old and you think you can take him. One of those type deals. Um, or... Sure, we'll wait out Golovkin another two years and, you know, then that'll be a great fight. Nah, man. Make the big fights. The right time is now for a host of fighters and weight classes. I mean, there's some young guys who, you know, I mean, shouldn't be fighting for a title in their next fight or something like that. But but these young champions, and I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about these early 20s, uh, all that, listen. It's like Anthony Joshua. He won a lot so fast. And notwithstanding whatever his age is, it's like he just had his 20... Was it 22nd, 23rd fight? I can't remember, but so while he's a unified champion, he's still kind of learning on the job, but he's taking the challenges and he'll continue. But here it's like, dude, you got to fight somebody. Now, that somebody he may fight who I wouldn't say that he's uh, totally earned his stripes but it, it, it's an acceptable fight and that's the fight that some including me thought could steal the show was Eubank Jr. versus Korobov and we said Korobov is either going to school this guy or his age is going to show 
Or it could be a thing where he starts out well and then youth become served. Well, we kind of got a little of it all, but also absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, so, I, he, I mean, he started out well. All three judges gave Korobov, they gave Matty the uh, first round. Um, or and then his age began to show with the, with the injury. I mean, the old body parts, you got to keep them oiled as much as you can. That's a little uh, slick way of talking about the ladies too, fellas. If you get my catch my drift, and um, that was that. <clears throat> so, I mean, it, it officially goes in the book, I think. Um. I had got up and went somewhere uh, as a as a, like a TKO, I believe, which I saw um, Zab Judah's brother some years ago come to Maryland and get ripped off. Um, he fought uh, Darnell Wilson, <laughs> Darnell the Dingaling Man Wilson, and he threw his shoulder out. The, the fight should have been a no contest in Maryland, kind of called it a knockout and he said he would never fight in Maryland again. I don't think he did. Um, Daniel Judah, uh, that was a cruiserweight fight. So it's not much you can say other than for, while I'd like to see Eubank Jr. take on Charlo and it is Charlo guys. Um, he, Eubank fought, um, I'm not sure. I think he fought like one round in like 20 something months or whatever. I can't be exact with it, but he needs more work. Not just work meaning development, but if you're gonna jump into a title fight, I mean, you probably want to get more rounds in. So I don't know how that's going to play out. But I think the setup is still Charlo versus Eubank Jr. And let me tell you something. That's going to be... That's going to be something else. It's not going to be... At, I don't think. I mean, it, I could be wrong. It's not going to be as entertaining as um, <clears throat> Harrison and the younger... And smaller Jamel, um, Charlo, as far as the um, the, the lead up and the, and the pressers and stuff like that, but it's it's going to be entertaining because Charlo, I mean he he's got that edge and Eubank has that mouthpiece, so that'll be cool. All right, and. Let's go back. Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna go there as far as potential matchups. Let me let me just move on. But that that um not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about those uh comments by uh Young Maul. So the big fight of the weekend um was uh AJ, Anthony Joshua trying to win his belts back from Andy Ruiz Jr. and that's what he did. I thought I thought it was um masterful. I, I thought that Joshua did what he was supposed to do. And I understand, listen, Andy Ruiz was two hundred eighty something pounds, but let's say, let's not act like this guy has been Schwarzenegger in any of his fights. I mean, as far as being in shape. That's just who he is. Sure, he carried the extra baggage, but I'm not going to discredit. Anthony Joshua was knocked down, what, four times, I believe, in the uh, initial fight. So I don't care what you say about the extra weight or what have you. It's just um, don't discredit Joshua. Now, Joshua's not there yet mentally, but I'm telling you, 
they better get him. And I agree with um, what's my man's name? Uh, um, uh, oh boy, why am I drawing a blank here? Um, true school, true school sports. I agree with him. I mean, you better get this guy in the next three or four fights. You better get him because. If you don't, Anthony Joshua becomes whoever, Lennox, his, his generation's version of Lennox Lewis. So I won't say he becomes Lennox Lewis. He's going to become Frankenstein. I'm telling you, you better get him in the next three or four. Because if you don't, he's going to be a problem for everybody. Because now that confidence is going to be back. And, I mean, the power is there. If he can kind of maintain that physique that he was at, he's cool. Um, like, like my man Thunderdome said, I, I think that Wilder's a better puncher. I mean, I think that um, AJ's a better puncher than Wilder. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't say he hits harder. He's a better puncher, as he pointed out. And he said, because he can get you out of there with two hands. Wilder hasn't quite developed the left hook to, to get you out of there. So, but Joshua has. And as cautious as he was, he when he put he put some leather on um Ruiz Jr. in that fight, and he just stuck to the script. Stuck to the script. He kind of got caught in no man's land a few times and wanted to exchange, but he just uh, kind of was disciplined and, and, and stuck back, stuck to the script again. So um, the likely scenario for him is he has two sanctioning bodies that want to force the mandatory. One... Uh, he has um, Kubrat Pulev as his mandatory. And the other one is Alexander Usyk. I think whether Ruiz Jr. won or whether Joshua won, the, the deal was that they were either going to vacate the WBO or try to, well, in Joshua's case, try to buy some time to say, listen, I'll fight my WBO mandatory, but let me fight this other guy first. Don't know if it's going to play out that way, but that's up to the WBO. And then, um, so, and Pulev, I'm not sure if he's the IBF uh, mandatory or not. However, um, <laughs> you just think back to Golovkin and, and how the IBF did and, and you understand that might be the appropriate course of action uh because they'll they'll kind of go after you um and you'll be a former champion and two guys will be fighting for a vacant belt belt so we'll see did anthony joshua watch our prediction video did andy ruiz jr because they did almost word for word what we said um we talked about ruiz hitting behind the head and just seemingly getting away with it this time he mainly did it on uh clinches we talked about aj doing the five second walk like holyfield did tyson you can watch um the prior video the prediction video to see that and he the first time he tied up he tried to do it and ruiz wouldn't cooperate and so he kind of hit him on the back of the head and said, nah, not, it's not going down like that. And then um, we talked about the Lennox Lewis jab. Not, and he wasn't doing it. In, I, I, I will admit, we called for it. He wasn't doing it in the beginning. He was throwing it too much. Jab, 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 jab. He was doing the Kevin Johnson jab. And we, we recommended he not do that. And even though he threw more jabs in that fight, then um, I, th I believe they said that he he's ever done, according to the math, 
that uh, which which involves human error sometimes. Um, even though he did that, when he after a few rounds went by, he started throwing it not as the rangefinder, as a weapon, but the timing of it. He slowed it down, and he didn't. There wasn't a pattern that Ruiz could read to say, "Okay, I know you're about to throw it here," and it. It controlled the fight. It was the best punch of the fight. What can you say? Um, so we'll see where he goes on from there. Uh, he he kind of did the Tony Harrison, Lennox Lewis. He, he just slowed the fight down. Um, shoulder feint, jab, double jab. Wait about seven seconds. Another jab. I mean, it's, it walk. Throw it again. I mean. You watch that Lewis versus Tua or Lewis versus Briggs. Um, I tell you, it, it was it was to me it was great. I mean, I don't know what everybody's disappointed about with this fight. I mean, I thought he did exactly what he had to do, and he showed you that he has more than one style, which you can't say about everybody in the heavyweight division. Um, as far as Ruiz wanting that third fight, well, you, you kind of... The problem with Ruiz is that he's brutally honest, which you respect. But the problem with Ruiz is that he's brutally honest. And... So when you say I want a third fight, oh, I partied and I didn't train, but next time I will, like, come on, man, dude. So his mouth got him in a little trouble. Um, I don't think that's a feasible fight, not not in the next three or four at least. <clears throat> um, so now we move on to this weekend. And uh, so we have, in the main event, we've got Terrence Crawford taking on Agus Kaviaskis. Um, <clears throat> and Kaviaskis, as we said, he's got hands like sledgehammers. And he's, he was... A big time prospect, but I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, all I can say is, and his nickname is the uh, the Green Machine, or is it the Mean Machine, or whatever. He's um Crawford, but I hope he catches him on. He's been inconsistent. Um, Agus has been inconsistent, and but when he's on. He's on, and so Crawford better hope he doesn't catch him when he's like A plus. And even if he is, who knows? Uh, Terrence is fighting. I'm not sure if um, Agus is is uh, a mandatory or if he's just you know keeping it in house and. and so on and so forth. Now, rumor has, speaking of in-house, rumor has it that um, Bob Arum is trying to make a, a fight with Porter. And when I look at, prior to Jared Hurd, okay? Prior to Jared Hurd, when I look at guys like Julian Williams, Terrence Crawford, Gary Russell Jr., there's certain guys in the premier camp that I believe Alan Heyman will let cross over Daniel Jacobs um cross over to either stay like as in Jacobs case with the zone or to fight other guys whether it still be on a premier channel or another channel like Gary Russell Jr. fighting Jojo Diaz. Um I think Julian Williams was close if he wouldn't have did what he did to um, uh, Hurd, he might have been close to having 
opportunities were because you just get a sense certain got like Danny Garcia is like kind of like untouchable at least at one point uh, Leo and it is Leo not Leo Leo Santa Cruz Deontay Wilder Errol Spence Jr. who I think is just a lot worse off than people are saying but I've been saying that for since October check the videos I, I just something's going on something's going on so and I, I spoke to um a uh a Spence Jr. what's it called uh man down um promotions fighter on the um the undercard so make sure you um make sure you check that make sure you check that video out this short video is probably like about um uh four minutes or something like that that's not how the silent treatment is supposed to work um irresistibly uh -oh. slow baked unbelievably oh, crunchy make some noise it's snyder's on hanover okay a little commercial going on i don't know what's what's happening here but uh anyway so um check that one out that's on our that's on our website, thefightjournal.com. And it's also underneath on the YouTube videos, a couple of videos below this one. And um, so, good kid. He, he, I think the title is One to Watch, uh, Burley Brooks. So check him out. Um, good kid. He's part of Man Down Promotions. And he's a Dallas uh, native. So, good kid. He, he fought on the undercard. He moved to 5-0 and with four knockouts. He was a little disappointed because he was all of his wins were by knockout, but he said you can't catch, can't get everybody, right? So he took the win and um for the tough guy. So make sure you check that out. But um my gut says my gut says Agus might land something on Crawford, man. And then Crawford will kind of just snap out of it recover and uh go ahead and get the w and then of course you'll hear it from whoever like talking about terrence isn't that good <laughs> which is hilarious uh on also on the undercard is um olympian michael conlin Okay, and um, Colin takes on uh, Vladimir Nikitin. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know I'm just not big on... Um, <clears throat> Michael Conlon. I mean, I haven't from from the beginning. I just there's a there's a hand speed thing that's going on with him that really isn't. I just think he's and listen. Everybody can't have the the hand speed, but for just all the hype and all the talk. When I saw him live a couple of times, um, I just, I just don't see it. I mean, and don't get me wrong, he's young. He's still in the developmental stage, but I just, I don't see it. I don't see it with this kid. And as far as he's concerned, um, he'll win against Vladimir, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, if you remember the Olympics, and if you can recall, there was a guy who threw his middle fingers up at the world. He lost a controversial decision against Vladimir in the Olympics. And uh, he just got mad at the world. <laughs> and and uh, put the, uh, gave the old heave-ho to the world. So this is a rematch. I mean, I'm sure, because I, I know ESPN, they're going to play it up. 
over and over and uh, give their little Larry Merchant moment where there's just whatever you want to call it, journalism at its finest. But anyway, but the main fight people are talking about is um, Richard Comey versus Tiafimo Lopez for Comey's IBF world lightweight title and potentially the rights to face Vasily Lomachenko. Um, Richard Comey has to use <clears throat> his height, his length, his experience um, because he's going to face a hard-charging Tiafimo Lopez. My gut here tells me that um, Comey's going to give him the business and then eventually Tiafimo will settle down um, he'll kind of mm, get pushed a little, recover from whatever Comey is bringing and then um, turn the heat up and uh, you'll, you'll see something that, that you'll see Tiafimo do his thing <laughs> as only he can do it. Um, On the flip side, I went to Tiafimo's last fight live. It was on the, I want to say it was on a Haney undercard. Am I right about that? Well, anyway, um, <clears throat> with Tiafimo, has Tiafimo headlined a card yet? Well, anyway, Tiafimo, something was wrong with his leg. And if it wasn't, he was playing it up all night as an excuse for fighting a, a just a tall, rangy guy who gave him a lot of problems. And he, um, so, uh, um, there's, in these small venues like the MGM National Harbor, they have stages in the background behind the, um, announcers. Uh, Timothy Bradley Jr. and Andre Ward and uh, uh, I'm sorry Dre Ward sorry Dre don't come after me man I forgot you don't answer to Andre anymore you're Dre um so he so as Lopez was coming down off the stage he couldn't walk down he kind of balanced himself as if you're sitting down and trying to push yourself up with your arms and he kind of slid down off the stage and I'm like dude really like is your leg that messed up if it is <laughs> you know these Brooklyn dudes man who kind of just want to over <laughs> be, be over dramatic and everything but if it truly is um then okay that's something to look at in this fight because footwork is part of his game I don't know if it was his knee or I can't remember but anyway I'll go uh, I'm gonna go Lopez hmm. I think he does what Shavikov didn't do and what Robert Easter Jr. didn't do I think he's gonna get some knockdowns and Lopez, a stoppage. I'm going to say stoppage. No. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to say he wins a decision. And speaking of winning decisions, so let's pretend Vladimir Nikitin comes to party and he's giving Conlon more than he can handle. And we go to the scorecards. You think the U.S. might get a little revenge <laughs> and gift wrap a win for uh, Conlon? I think so. Um, I don't think it's going to play out that way, but that would be funny. Uh, that would be funny as like weird, like, wow, this again. 
it's never funny to the fighter who gets ripped off, but in this case, it would be kind of fair. <laughs> All right, so make sure you check the fights out. Um, and tonight on the zone, um, my man Brad Solomon steps up to the plate to take on Virgil Ortiz Jr. Solomon's a good fighter, but being off. He's not a power guy. And Ortiz, of course, has knocked everyone out. He's fought and hasn't gone past the sixth round, sixth or seventh round. I like Brad, but Brad's been off for like almost two years, I think. And so, um, like Young Maul said, Jamal Charlo, you got to catch guys at the right time, right? And that's why I don't like that statement. Maybe a few years ago to Brad Solomon, who was fighting. Maybe he gave, he would give Ortiz Jr. a run. But tonight, I just think uh, they gave Brad a nice, they said, hey, we'll pay you this. And he said, if you up it to this, I'll do it. And we'll see. We'll see. All right, so make sure you check these fights out tonight and tomorrow. And uh, we'll catch you.